Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, first of all, let me just say a quick thank you to all of my subscribers. You've helped us reach a, uh, our first major milestone of a thousand subscribers. We're now over that mark. And uh, it's just uh, absolutely amazing. I never really thought we'd go very far with this, this sh uh, channel, uh, honestly. So thank you to each and every one of you subscribers. Uh, let's help grow this channel and see how far we can go. Um, so we didn't do a video last week. We just kind of kept our nose at the grindstone, stayed working had a lot to do um and uh so let me kind of go and show you what all we've done to the car uh, first of all as you can see we've got the car pretty much all mocked together uh of course we've got all of our gaps and stuff set we've got our uh inner fender uh our fender vents in we've got all of our spoilers on the car there we've got the hood scoop uh mounted to the engine and i'll talk about that here in just a minute uh, one of the things here that we did, we went ahead and mounted up our front bumper. And as you can see there, it fits pretty good. And this is a new uh, fiberglass bumper. But again, it um, everything worked out really, really well. I'll talk about a few things, uh, issues that we did have with it. But I was really surprised at how well it fit up to the original fenders um you know of course you can see here that there is a few little issues here this um fender's a little longer here but we can take care of all of that in the bodywork stage um this fender here still is just a little bit loose at the bottom we've actually got to uh, make a bracket here um in this area for that to bolt up so let me uh most of the work that we did was under the hood so let me get the hood raised here and i'll show you what we've done so again the majority of the work that we did here was under the hood and uh, just kind of give you a little quick overview here maybe you can kind of spot out some of the things that we did and then i'll kind of go in and talk about um some of those individually so the first thing i'll start with is the engine itself we do have the uh, shaker scoop mounted to the engine uh, and what we did there on that is basically we fabricated a uh, metal plate that kind of goes around the hat of the supercharger um, and has the outside shape of the actual scoop here uh, and you can see that little plate uh, right here uh, to mount it there's two um bolts here on the front that we mounted uh we used a one inch spacer here on the front uh that goes through and these are just some of the factory um bosses or standoffs here on the supercharger that wasn't being used do we use that to bolt the plate down on the front and on the back uh the back uses a three quarter inch spacer on that and then the actual scoop will rivet uh to that metal plate now those are just some alignment pins there they're not actually riveted down uh, so i'll pull that off here and show you that in just a moment we also went ahead and mounted our uh, little factory drain here through the scoop uh, we'll have to glue that down but we've got it into place so we can get our drain tube hooked up for that um, as you can see here too we'll start at the firewall you can see we do have some of our wiring run we went ahead and mounted up um, our American Auto Wire uh, body harness. We wanted to go ahead and put it into place uh, to double check, uh, make sure all of how our wiring, uh, how we're going to route all of our wiring. So it mounts up in its factory location, as you can see there. Um, and to uh, the right, we have our wiring coming out to the front. This is our front lighting, our turn signals, our marker lights, our horns uh all of that kind of stuff and that will be routed inside the inner fender here well so we're not going to see those uh they'll be routed up in here behind this area here the other wires there coming out to the left is for the uh, windshield wiper motor and the washer bottle um, motor there for the uh, windshield wipers we also have wiring coming out for uh, the starter solenoid and um, the mega fuse that mounts up to um, which on the harness American Auto Wire harnesses they use these big huge mega fuses maybe you can see that there we mounted it to the firewall there on the back side of the engine to kind of get it out of the way uh, and kind of hide that it's still accessible 
but um, there's two big 60 amp uh, fuses there for that. Um, so we don't have them actually wired in, but we do have that fuse blocks mounted. We've had to go in and uh, weld some nuts to the back side of the firewall. And I'll show you that here in just a moment as well. Moving over here to the passenger side here, you can see we have our um, filler neck for the supercharger coolant system there. We've got it mounted. Now this is off of the original setup here for the Cadillac. We took the mount and modified it and actually spot welded it to the firewall. So now um, this uh, filler neck here can actually bolt up. And then, or as you can see there, we have our mock-up hose there. Uh, one of those, there'll actually be another one. We've still got to plumb that whole system there as well. Again, some of our wiring here, we've just kind of got it hanging out. That's definitely not its final location. Um, and as you can see there, there's a couple more spot welds there that we did. Uh, we went ahead and mocked up um, our vintage air uh, system. So we mounted the unit uh, inside the uh, cabin, I guess you would say. And so we didn't want any bolts coming through the firewall. So we made a plate and uh, spot welded it there. And I'll show you that here in just a moment. The most of the work that we did here was on our inner fenders. Uh, and again, if you're familiar with these cars, you know that they have a factory um, indention here where your wiring runs through. And then there's clips there that holds the wire into place. We hammered and dollied that out, run up through the English wheel to smooth it back out. We didn't, we didn't really want that there. And then also we um, filled in that huge gap there. And unfortunately, um, I lost some footage. I, I've had, it was a camera setting off or something and ended up losing the footage they had. I had some footage of us actually working on that, but we've lost that. But you can see there, we filled that in and brought that hole down so it's closer to the frame rail and it does away with the big rubber flap there on the inner fenders. Also able to clean up these big wrinkles here that are in the inner fenders there from the factory. Again, both sides, uh, we took and cleaned that up there uh, just to get it down a little closer to the actual frame rails and clean that whole area up there. I mentioned that we had mounted our vintage air setup. Again, we're just making sure that everything in this stage, um, all the fabrication's done, all the mounts are where they need to be, um, and everything's routed how it's going to be. So another example of that is this plate here that I made. Now this will be our air conditioning hoses and our heater hoses coming out. Again, all those hoses will run in behind that inner fender there, so you won't see them, but they'll actually come out here. And I didn't want them just laying out, so we've made a plate here. This plate actually bolts in uh, to the fender here. And then, as you can see, I've made a plate that mounts up to the core support there that kind of fills in that, and it bolts in there as well. So it'll be a nice, neat um, place for our hoses to come out there, and then they'll route over to the actual engine um so today we should be getting in our pulley setup that we've ordered uh so i'll show that a little bit later today once we get that we'll get um, our air conditioning mounted in here a uh, new water pump all new pulleys uh it'll be a pretty sharp setup uh moving on here towards the front of the car again um the air conditioning condenser we've got it mounted up so that's the hose the hoses here coming out for that uh, as you can see here, we've got our brand new uh, DeWitt's aluminum radiator with our dual spall electric fans on here. Now, this is a uh, replacement radiator for a Trans Am with a LS swap. So it has all of our provisions, uh, our inlets and outlets here on the uh, passenger side. It has a uh, port here for a steam port and has a temperature sensor there for the fan if we need to use that or we can use it off of the computer. Um, so we've got this mounted up now, originally this would mount up in its, you know, you know, it's factory, um, way. So you would use a, uh, you know, your factory fan shroud is the way the radiator mounts in on these cars, but we're not using that. So we had to fabricate this, uh, bracket here that bolts up just like the fan shroud does using its same locations there. We just did this again out of 18 gauge sheet metal. Uh, fabricated it and then we're using the factory little rubber isolators here to uh, to hold everything into place 
And we did this on the top. And then we've mounted uh, the radiator there. We built the same kind of mounts and we use those for uh, the bottom and they're welded to the core support as well. So again, we made the little filler panels here uh, to kind of close off and clean up the backside of this core support. And then uh, one of the things that we worked on uh, yesterday was finishing up our panel here, this little closeout panel from the core support over to the front bumper. Now this is again all out of 18 gauge sheet metal uh, and it bolts in. And we also come in and cleaned up some of the holes there on the core support that we didn't need. Um, and then as you can see here, this hole here, once we remove this piece, we'll weld it up as well. So again, just kind of cleans that up the area, that whole area up there. Um, and uh, just kind of fills that in. I never have really liked how you could see through uh, the front bumper and the core support. So fix that. And to do that, we also had to add a couple of little small pieces here, one on each side to fill in um, from our fender over here to the front um, to close in. There was a gap there, so we did that again on both sides moving up here to the bumper again the fiberglass bumper fit up really really well um, one of the issues that i did have though is with the header panel so this header panel is fiberglass it's original the bumper cover is fiberglass aftermarket so to get this header panel to come in here behind the uh, bumper cover the way the factory does we actually had to cut this thing in half and i wasn't really happy about that but we made it work but to get it um to slide in in behind the bumper and and fit up in where it needed to that was the only way we could do that so it worked out okay we can refiber glass that it's just a small little cut there in the very center uh we'll strengthen that back up and as you can see there, I don't actually have the steel bumper in here yet. We're still waiting on some bumper brackets. I've got the bumper over here for a 77, but I have a 76 bumper brackets and they don't work with each other. So we're waiting on bumper brackets for that. Uh, also on the engine, uh, we're having to, we've got some parts ordered for our air intake system. So we'll route it from there over to the driver's side area over here. Uh, we'll do some kind of a cold air intake system, and I'm sure I'll have to fabricate uh, some parts and pieces for that. Um, we also have to mount um, an intercooler for the supercharger. We've got a power steering cooler that we'll plumb in and a transmission cooler that we'll plumb in, plus an overflow for the radiator. So a lot of components here to still go in. Oh, and a washer bottle for the uh, windshield wiper system. So still a lot of components here to get mounted and put into place. So we wanted to, this is kind of why we wanted to mock everything up as much as possible uh, to make sure that we can get everything in here. Because there's a lot of systems here for this that you would normally not have on a, an original or a restored car. Also with all that into mind is one of the reasons we moved the battery to the trunk. It's just because there's so much here underneath the hood of this thing that's going to be mounted up um, that we didn't really want to have to worry about fighting a battery underneath the hood as well. So let me move over to the inside of the car and I'll show you a few things that we've done there as well. So again, moving to the inside of the car, uh, you can see here we just have the, uh, the wiring harness just kind of draped into place. <clears throat> Nothing's actually mounted or uh, where it needs to be. We do have our factory steering column put in here just to kind of give us an idea of how everything's going to lay. I'm not 100% sure we're going to stay with this factory column just yet. Um, but when this car came to us, you know, it was an automatic car. So we used uh, the factory brake pedal assembly and um, added uh, the, a brand new clutch pedal and then change the brake pedal over to, you know, the four speed style uh, pedal there for that. As you can see there, we do have our uh, pedal for uh, the electric drive by wire pedal. This is the factory pedal out of the Cadillac uh, CTSV. We've got a bracket made for that. And I'll show you a little bit of that on the other side. So again, here from the passenger side, you can see the pedal. We've got it uh, mounted to a bracket that we made. And we've got that bracket just kind of temporarily um, 
screwed into place. We don't have it welded just yet. I want to make sure that our angles and stuff are right on that before we weld it in or bolt it in, whatever we decide to do there. So I'm, I'm kind of holding off on that just for the moment. Um, I want to get some kind of a seat, uh, probably just a factory seat to set in here just to make sure uh, that it feels good on, a, on our pedals and it's in this, in this good location. Uh, so we'll do that and then um, we'll get it in its final location there as well. Again, right beside that there, that little square hole, we're not going to be needing that, so we'll weld that up as well. These were the, uh, the nuts that we welded to the back side of the firewall for the mega fuse. You can see that there. And then our plate here is our bracket for the uh, vintage air unit. And then up here, we've got our two holes that uh, we welded and actually screw into there and actually hold the, the unit in as well. So as you can see, we've done a lot to the car, mostly under the hood. Uh, everything on the outside is pretty well uh, ready for the next stage of body work, uh, just fine tuning uh, all of our gaps and, and getting all of the body work finished up. And we'll be pretty well ready for paint. So we're really spending a lot of time under the hood. That's where the most of the work has been going on. Um, like I said, still waiting on some parts. So we'll try to get that finished up, uh, hopefully this week or next week. Uh, then we can kind of start blowing it all back apart and um well we still got to do our exhaust so that'll be uh that'll be fun i've got something uh planned for that that should be interesting so uh anyway like i said we've got to build the car make sure everything fits first so it's a lot of planning that goes in when you're doing a car like this you've got to plan 10 steps ahead because if you change one thing it may change five things down the road of how something mounts in or or relocating something so you got to kind of plan all that out and that's what i've been doing and, and i had to kind of really wrap my head around that so that's why we didn't do a video last week uh just kind of you know stayed focused on what we had going on there so um i think the next thing we're waiting on like i said our pulleys will be in a little bit later today so i'll uh, i'll show you those so as you can see here, we've got all of our pulley system in from CVF Racing. Uh, this is their Black Diamond series. So everything is uh, have a really nice black coating. And then they come in and cut the edges and just gives it a really, really nice look. So we've got all of our brackets here, our air conditioning compressor, power steering pump, alternator, water pump, all the pulleys and accessories, the bolts, the hardware, uh, belt tensioners, we've got a belt, this is our power steering reservoir kit, and then we've got a new uh, fluid dampener there for the engine as well. So everything, again, is packaged real nice. As you can see, we've got it laid out here on the foam that it was uh, packaged in. Everything boxed individually, really nice pieces, uh, packaged very well. And uh, really nice set of instructions. Now, we went ahead and hole punched them and put them into our binder. We keep binders here that has all of our paperwork uh, for the car um, together here. So it's easier for us to keep up with it. So we do that and we've got all the instructions uh, on going ahead and installing this uh, setup here. So let's um, see what we can do about getting some of these parts put on the uh, engine. So as you can see there, we've got most of the CVF uh, pulleys on the motor. We've got our alternator here, our power steering pump down here, the water pump, uh, air compressor. We still got the covers and stuff off of everything. And we still have to pull the pulley off of the supercharger and swap that out. Now we are missing a couple of idler pulleys here, one here by the air compressor and one down here by the power steering pump. Those were actually sent out in another shipment that hadn't come in yet. Uh, on the power steering pump, we're going to talk about that just for a minute. This we did opt to do the remote reservoir. We wasn't sure if we was going to have enough room to do a um, pump mounted reservoir between our brackets here for our sway bar and the frame rail. So we just decided to go ahead and do the power steering um, remote reservoir. 
So this is the reservoir that we've got here, uh, the little mount already here uh, that the reservoir is mounted in. And I went ahead and fabbed up this little bracket here really quick. Uh, the idea is to mount that here on this panel here, right beside the radiator. Then we'll plumb everything up and it gives us easy access here to the power steering reservoir. And then on the opposite side there, you'll have your uh, coolant for your radiator. So that should give us plenty of room here to go ahead and mount the air cleaner in right beside that. It'll be a little tight, but I think it'll work. So we're gonna go ahead and get that bracket there tacked into place. Uh, this is gonna pretty much wrap up this video here though. Uh, we'll come back in where we're still waiting on our air parts uh, for the air intake. So once we get that done, we'll swap our pulleys and stuff out. Still got some work to do here, but we got it, uh, got a lot done. And uh, so, like I said, waiting on parts, and uh, we'll do a little bit more, and then we'll bring you back then. Guys, hope you liked it. Uh, again, thanks for all the subscribers out there. Uh, let's keep growing this channel and uh, see where it takes us. Thanks.